is that? But he ain't a fool. It's fucking cable. Nathan Christopher Charles Summers. His dad is Cyclops, his mom is a demon-possessed clone of Jean Grey, he has a half-sister from the future, and a half-brother that he shares memories with. He and his clone hated each other. He has immense psionic ability, but due to the techno-organic virus that turned his arm into metal, he can't use those abilities. Cable is an interesting dude. What's up guys, I'm Ryan Eric P on Twitter. Tweet at me if I get anything wrong. Before I tell you what a techno-organic virus is, make sure you subscribe because it's the only way to protect your future children from diverging timelines. Cable's backstory starts with Apocalypse. Here's what happened. Apocalypse turned Nathaniel Essex into Mr. Sinister. And in order to create the perfect weapon to use against Apocalypse, Mr. Sinister then cloned Jean Grey, aka Madeline Pryor. His plan was to create the perfect mutant offspring between Madeline and Cyclops. So Apocalypse learned what Mr. Sinister planned to use Nathan for and kidnapped him. He infected him with the techno-organic virus, a disease which converts living tissue into technology. The virus is driven by the desire to spread to other beings and has no antidote. Once he was infected, Nathan was pulled into the future where his half-sister Rachel injected the psyches of his parents into two people who raised him and taught him to use his powers. Nathan used his telekinetic ability to hold the virus in check, but not before his arm was turned into metal. So as a precaution, Rachel cloned Nathan just in case the virus killed him. Apocalypse captured that clone and named him Strife because that's a kick-ass name. Strife goes on to kill Nathan's wife, who he met in the future, and forces Nathan to kill his own son. Nathan then chased Strife back to present time in order to kill him. While there, or here, Nathan finally adopted the codename Cable. All of this started with Apocalypse, so Cable goes way back in time to kill him. During the fight, Cable's blood mixes with Apocalypse's blood. This infects Apocalypse with the techno-organic virus that he gave to Nathan thousands of years in the future. Apocalypse uses the virus to communicate with the banded celestial technology, which gives him incredible powers. He then survives long enough to in turn infect Cable with the virus, and make us all extremely tired after trying to make sense of this convoluted backstory. Cable has worked or fought with a huge percentage of the Marvel Universe, including multiple iterations of the X-Men and the Avengers. But how did he meet Deadpool? That's a whole nother weird story. Deadpool and Cable are both infected with a virus that turns them blue. Deadpool was hired to help a crazy church infect the world with this weird blue virus. Cable's DNA mixes with Deadpool's DNA, and this gives them the ability to teleport. But if one of them teleports, then the other one does as well. So they're kind of connected through teleportation. Eventually, Cable turns them pink, how pretty, and then cures the world of the virus. Cable manages to make do with the annoying Deadpool and saves the world with him. Since Cable's the child of two extremely powerful mutants, he was blessed with some incredible genes. You remind me of my father. He's a high-level psychic with extraordinary powers as a telepath and telekinetic. He's able to read thoughts across incredible distances and even connect with multiple minds at the same time. He can also protect his own mind from other psychics. Even further, he has the ability to rearrange any structure down to its atomic level. Whoa. In addition to all that, he can project blasts of mental energy that can easily kill other human beings. And just like Professor X, Cable is a master of astral projection. He can hang out on his own plane of existence or check out what's happening on other astral planes. What did you just do to me? I pushed your astral form out of your physical form. What's in that tea? Cable also possesses the ability to levitate objects. But because he's a smart dude and doesn't really like helping his friends move, he never really disclosed the full extent of his powers. But believe us, it's in the tons. In terms of durability, Cable can create a force field to protect himself from any harm. Because of this techno-organic virus, Cable is basically a cyborg. This gives him superhuman strength and resistance to any physical harm. He's even held his own against the entire Avengers team. Due to having a biocomputer for a nervous system, he is fast enough to evade bullets and can see far across all spectrums with his cyborg eyeballs. The virus also gives him the ability to time travel. Great Scott! In addition to all this, Cable is an accomplished warrior and leagues above any war general you've ever heard of. Don't even think about fighting hand-to-hand -hand with Cable because he has superhuman endurance, both physical and mental. He's also mastered every weapon imaginable from the 20th and 40th centuries. That's a lot of guns. Finally, Cable graduated college with a degree in law. Guys, I couldn't cover Cable's entire storyline because it's extremely crazy and I don't have enough time. But let me know who should be the next deep dive. Should it be everyone's favorite god, Thor? 
Bishop, who's also a time-traveling mutant, or Atrocitus, who actually was runner-up from last week? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.